So you want to fly the Anvil F7C Hornet? Well, sit down, strap in, and let's go. The F7C Hornet. To the enemy, it is a weapon never to be underestimated. To allies, it's a savior. At its heart, the F7C Hornet is the same dependable and resilient multi-purpose fighter that has become the face of the UEE Navy. With a fully modular fuselage tested in the harshest battle conditions, the F7C is the foundation to build on and meet whatever requirements you have in mind. From vicious dogfighter to rugged all-terrain spacecraft, the F-7C Hornet has you covered through the darkest vacuum. Hey everybody, this is Fist25. Welcome to my brand new YouTube channel. I appreciate y'all from coming by. Today we're going to talk about and review the F-7C Hornet Space Superiority Fighter, manufactured by Anvil Aerospace. The F-7C is one of the oldest platforms in Star Citizen, and uh, as you can tell by reading the brochure or looking at one of the commercials it is pretty dated it has specs in the brochure that are not up to date with the most current model and some of the other aircraft in the video are also out of date like the 325a but no matter the f7c has proven its worth throughout the stanton system and we're going to show you some of that gameplay in the video coming up we're going to take a tour around the F7C. I'm going to show you its stock loadout and then I'm going to show you the loadout that I prefer to roll with. In addition to that, we're going to show you the video from RSI or CIG, the commercial that was made years ago. And then we're going to go around the Stanton system and do a little dogfighting, both in first person mode and with a chase camera. And I'm going to show you exactly how capable the F7C Hornet is in dogfighting and in atmospheric flying, space flying, all aspects. So come on in, sit down, strap up, and let's go. So we are outside Microtech L1 and we have the F7C Hornet in front of us. As you can see, the loadout on the nose weapon mount is a Panther 337 repeating laser. You can see the fuselage through here. On the top mount, I have a size 5 Veripuck Hornet ball turret with a size 4 Revenant ballistic Gatling gun attached. A lot of firepower in that one. From the sides, you can see the intake, uh, the wings that are spread back right now because the landing gear is down. On either side of the wing, I have a Mantis GT220 Gatling gun. This, this Hornet loadout right now is my ballistic loadout, but I do have one laser in there just in case I run out of ammo and I still need to continue the fight. On the back, you can see the, the classic Hornet, I guess spoiler is what you could call it. Um, and then it has a massive engine right here in the back. Uh, it is very powerful. It does go uh, fairly fast. Uh, we'll go over specs here in a minute when we do some live testing. Uh, on the starboard side, again, the back of the spoiler, the wing, uh, there's a secondary wing in there and the other intake so let's go ahead and we will get in the hornet and we will take it out for a test drive so i'm going to hit r to take us to flight ready status all right the engine has started up you see our shields are generating the view from the back you definitely see the engine as ignition, we have our port red lights and our starboard green lights back here. Uh, view from the top. And we're just going to go for a nice, easy lift off. That's a lift off. We're going to retract our landing gear right now. As you can 
see the wings spread out, the gear retracts into its panels. Uh, you can see the missiles out there because my weapons are active. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the weapon systems and they will also lose. In case you're wondering, that button is P to close weapon systems. And we're going to back off the view a little bit here. I'm just going to grab So we're flying along. So that red line, the red line is your SEM speed, and the white line represents where your slider is currently at. I'm gonna go ahead and turn weapons on. Weapons online, you see our missiles showed up there and our gimbals. So we're flying along here in the F7C, and we're gonna pan just to the left a little bit. Take a look at this beautiful aircraft from Ambil Aerospace. As we pan around, we can see the sun is hitting the aircraft and showing off the missiles, the weapons on the port side as we transition to the front. Starboard side, we are hidden in the shade, but we can see that starboard side green light. We'll transition to the rear, we can see the large engine with the exhaust plume coming out onto that tail spoiler from a more top-down view as we zoom in and zoom out, which is what I typically fly at this view. We're going to pull up and just do a few maneuvers over here. Look at the roll rate of the aircraft. It's not the fastest in the game, but it is pretty quick. That is Microtech L1 in the distance, if you care to note. Get a bottom view here uh, with the sun highlighting the aircraft. Twisting around, we can see it is definitely symmetrical. And those three size three guns on the bottom of the ship. That's all four guns firing, the size four on top, the size threes on bottom. So we just pull some basic maneuvers. We can see our thrusters moving around. That was the afterburner plume. Lots of weapons look like firing at that angle and with a turn. So it is a very beautiful aircraft. As I've said before, uh, it is a joy to fly. There are some very hard to fly aircraft in Star Citizen, as many of you know. Um, this is not one of them. This actually has really good maneuverability, whereas some of the other variants are a little bit sluggish. I'm going to drop cruise control right here. I'm going to raise the speed all the way at the top, and we're going to look at an exterior view of going up to full speed. You can see the variable exhaust nozzle contracting as we get a lot of speed. We'll throw some afterburner in there and the bin opens up. As we head straight towards Mike L1 station. Go inside, we'll see our max speed here is 1,228 meters per second, which is quite quick. perform minimum radius turns pretty well Morning. and we do overheat it is a size one ship but with the ultra flows I have in here it recovers pretty quick and it sounds phenomenal all right so we're going to go ahead and check the loadout of the F7C Hornet, thanks in part to Urkel Games and their amazing website, which just got a reformat here, and I am enjoying it quite a bit. So this is the Ambel F7C Hornet, the stock loadout here. Um, comes with uh, Mantis GT220, two of them, uh, fixed size threes on here. 
Comes with some Dominator, size 2 missiles, some Marksman, size 1s. It comes with some all civilian grade C components from the shields, the power plants, the cooler, and the quantum drive. We can't unfortunately change the radars or the thrusters at this point. But in the future, I'm sure that'll be a thing. So we're going to go ahead and go to my stock loadout. We're going to change the, the nose to a CF337 Panther repeater. I choose this because it typically has a little bit longer range than the NDB30, which actually does quite a bit of damage here. Um, I have not had good luck with these attritions. They used to work really, really well as they're, they're the Hurston Dynamics weapons that actually get more powerful as you fire them. Um, they do work really well overclocked, but I end up running out of power and, and overheating pretty often when I use them. So again, the NDB 30s here, the range is 1286 and the Panther's range is 21 to so I can shoot a little bit further away. And it's my only laser, so I wanna make sure it's gonna have the range if I need it to escape and invade. So I'll put the Panther up there. I keep the Mantis GT220s up there. And then for the top turret, uh, I, I keep the ball. It's actually size five, um, but it transitions to a size four because it becomes gimbaled. And I go ahead and pick a Ballista Revenant Ballista Gatling, Gatling. And that's what I use for my gun loadout. Those are the four guns that I've used in the video. I will go ahead and change my missile loadout to use all size twos, which you have to change the missile launcher, uh, the 212 here. And I like to use cross section missiles, which I believe I have all strike forces on mine. So I change everything over to a Strike Force 2. For shields, I like to go with either an Industrial Palisade, which has uh, 7,900 hit points compared to the Guardian, which has 7,560. Sometimes I do use the Guardian because it has a regen of 153 hit points a second, where the Palisade's regen is 171. So typically I will use a Palisade and to compensate for that, regeneration i will switch over to a military shield the fr66 which you can see the regen over here is 306 hit points a second so it becomes a good combination for a power plant i usually use the military js300 it seems to it reboot the fastest if you get emp'd um, it recovers really well and it provides quite a bit of power you could go with the breton or any of the other industrials um but I, I have no issues with the JS300. It gives me plenty of power to handle anything I throw at it. For the coolers, I do not go with the military. I go with the industrial ultra flows. Uh, I don't think cooling is implemented quite the way that the designers want in the game right now. Um, everything does actually go through a cooling system, but there's still some work that needs to be done. Some, some numbers that have to be tweaked and Right now, Ultra Flows, Industrial Grade A, give me the best performance. As far as Quantum Drive, I typically have a standard drive I use for all my size one ships with a smaller fuel tank, and that is the Atlas Drive. The Atlas will, as you can see, let me go from Port Olisar to Hurston in about six minutes. And I can also make that jump from Port Olisar to Microtech, one of the farthest jumps in the game, in eight minutes and 55 seconds. If I choose a different civilian drive, um, maybe maybe not the flood, but if I choose like the rush, you see there's the oops. If I choose the rush, there's the gas tank over here, which means I have to stop for gas. If I choose the fastest civilian drive, the burst, hey, that's a great B, and I still have to get gas. But the Atlas is a grade A civilian quantum drive. So that also means it spools up and spools down a little bit faster. You could go with the military VK-00, which is the fastest drive that you can get for the Hornet. However, you can't even make a small jump from Port Alistar to Hurston without getting gas. So the lowest uh, military drive, the Beacon, also have to stop and get gas. 
Stealth Drives. Okay, the Zephyr. You can go to Hurston, it looks like. And the Drift. So I would just stick with the tried and true Atlas. They sell them at Port Olisar. It works really well. So this is my typical loadout here. Um, 2072 DPS, 185 ALF damage. Uh, I use repeaters because I like the feel of them. Uh, they don't do as much high alpha damage on the first strike. Uh, I do have other builds that I use that for and other aircraft. I've tested this a lot. And right now, for me and my flight style, I'm not the best pilot in the world. I'm the first to admit that. Gonzo beats me regularly. If you're a Cobra, you know who Gonzo is. And so I got to use repeaters. It's, it's more fun to see your shots. It's almost like using tracer rounds. So... That is the Urkel loadout. Now, before we get into more footage of flying around, I do want to go over the brochure that CIG has put out for the F7C Hornet series. In this video in particular, we're only going over the base F7C Hornet, but there are other variants here. Uh, the one you can see on the screen here is the Ghost model, which is also one of my favorites. It goes over some nice pictures here, uh, what the Hornet can do, the roles that it has played. Uh, I believe it's about, yeah, right here, two centuries old. And it's been going for a long time in the UEE Navy, and now we have the option to use this on a civilian platform. Great picture of the variable exhaust nozzle. Of the Hornet, all the Hornets have the same engine, and it's really well, good speed, good acceleration. I don't know how old these dimensions are here. They're probably accurate, but I mean, I don't know who really necessarily cares about these dimensions unless you're trying to fit an aircraft into another type of ship or something like that. They at least in this page, they don't give us the dimensions uh, with the wings folded back when the landing gear is down, which is what matters on most of these ships. They do have it in this picture, but in this picture, the wings are spread and the landing gear is down. So, some more nice pictures of this and some quotes of different pilots around the UVE Navy who have used this aircraft. Here's an actual blueprint of the F 7C Hornet. Another blueprint with the ball turret and some of the stock guns and missiles and the optional turret that can be placed on the nose. This turret hole is, is a size 3 turret that holds two size 2 weapons. So you can also have that on the top turret as well and that will let your Hornet have six weapons at the same time. So two on the nose, two on the top and then two on each wing. So four size twos and two size threes. And if you gimbal the ones on the wings, you'll have all size twos and everything will be gimbaled. So as far as being a gimbaled monster in a fight, if you prefer that type of auto aim, then this is definitely the ship for you. More quotes from different pilots around the Navy. Give me a fully loaded Hornet and I'll shake the gates of heaven. As you can see, here's the nose turret down here on this uh, aircraft. And then there's also the top turret with the, the two guns. The, this long lip radar is part of the tracker version of the Hornet. Again, a picture of the nose turret and the top turret with the two gun configuration. And as much as we would like our cockpit to look like this, it obviously does not in game. You've already seen what it looks like, but maybe there will be reworks in the future. And then we come down to the specs of the, our actual Hornet that we've been flying. Um, you've seen the quote here that I read earlier in the video. Uh, you can see some of the hard points there. I don't know how accurate it is. 
The Hornet is supposed to be able to have some kind of cargo storage with the store all big box Model H, but I haven't seen that in game. And you can see the shields, the stock shields are different from this uh, brochure package. I don't know about the power plant. I don't think that's the correct one. The same with the engine. We're not able to change any of that stuff out or the thrusters right now, but maybe in the future. So, there's the ghost profile, the tracker, the Super Hornet, which will be my next video. And then more specifications of the Hornet and its variants. And then some of the components and features. I'm gonna go through this really quick as not all of this is applicable to the Hornet that we are reviewing. So of course, this is Anvil Aerospace and this is, you know, at the time of publication, this is the model's and Anvil Aerospace reserves the right to make any changes at any time it wants to without notice. So Anvil Aerospace does that all the time. With that, that is the wrap up of the brochure. And now we're going to transition into the Anvil Aerospace commercial that CIG produced a few years ago that really drew me into this aircraft. Stay tuned. Legendary fighter pilot Ari O'Reilly once said, Give me a fully loaded Hornet and I'll shake the gates of heaven. Anvil Aerospace's Hornets have faced Vandal, Xion, Pirates, and Criminals. Tested in the harshest conditions, the Hornet has proven time and again its ability to withstand damage and still be able to dish it out. With all the punishment it handles on a daily basis, won't you think the new Hornet can handle yours? Honey, I got the ice cream you wanted. That commercial really brought me into the concept of the Hornet and the all-around multi-role space superiority fighter. I think some could argue that other ships like the Cutlass Black are more multi-role because they can carry more cargo, but as far as combat goes, I'll take a Hornet any day. And so with that, we're going to transition into some first-person dogfighting to show you that and some third-person chase camera dogfighting 
to show you how the Hornet really handles in action. So enjoy. And if you like this video, please throw me a subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my future videos. I am new to this, I'm getting better. Production will get better as we go along. And one day we'll have 4K as well. So without further ado, the F7C Hornet dogfighting. There's my target. See the target. See what he is. He's a Mustang Delta. And now he's active. Sometimes missiles will soften up the target, help you get a kill faster. But with the new patch, you have to be in range. You see how fast that constellation went down. That is what remnants of ballistics will get you. A couple missiles on this guy. Fire. Honestly, you know, up until you expend your ammo, do some bounty hunting missions, you could easily earn 50, 60,000 before having to go back and get more ammo or more gas or whatever.
that's all we have today for the F7C Hornet. I hope you enjoyed the video and I want to remind you if you like it and you want to see more content, go ahead and throw me a like and subscribe and comment below if you have any thoughts or questions or if you just want to get into Star Citizen and start shooting down pirates. As always, this is Fist25. A special thanks to Jawa Sparky and the entire Cobra Force. We'll see you next time in the verse. Good night, Stanton.